Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FBL Now. Today we're just going to be going over a couple of new wildcard drafts for game week 8. I know a lot of people have activated the chip over the international break. So just put together a couple more drafts for you guys. But if you're excited for the video, drop a like down below. Leave a comment, subscribe if you're brand new and let's get into the video. So, starting things off, we're just going to go over two different drafts today. One with a couple of different key players. Like, one of the drafts has, like, Solanke and City Defense and stuff like that. The other one has, like, Trent, etc., etc. Obviously, you'll see what I mean when we go over these drafts. But, either way, this is draft number one. And in goal, we do have Flecken and Ward. I'm still not a massive fan of the Flecken option because Brentford just haven't kept a clean sheet this season. Uh, but the fixtures are really, really nice coming up for them. And it just enables you to have a lot of money to kind of pump into your outfield players. Uh, again, I would always just prefer going for an Edison or a Raya just because I think they're a bit of a set and forget at this point, especially Raya. But if you did want to spend a little bit more, more money outfield and you just kind of wanted to go as cheap as possible in the goalkeepers, uh, then I think Flecken is probably the best 4.5 mil keeper to have. Another option, obviously, is Pickford as well who has just a ridiculous run of fixtures, just green fixtures left, right, and center. But he's also a little bit more expensive and I think... Flecken is probably a little bit better of an option than Pickford, but if you're going to put money into Pickford, you may as well spend a tiny bit more and go for somebody like Rea or Edison. Obviously, Allison is out, so you do always have that Kelly here option, but he's going to be back relatively soon, so I probably wouldn't go there. Plus, it does kind of stop you from having three outfield Liverpool players. Not that you probably would have three outfield Liverpool players on this sort of wildcard draft right now, just because the fixtures aren't that great. But at the same time, that's also something to kind of take into account. But either way, we've gone Flecken and, and obviously Ward in goal. That just can be any 4 mil goalkeeper. I've gone for Leicester because you're not going to have three outfield Leicester players, let's be honest, at any point in the season. So Flecken and Ward. At the back, we've gone Gabriel, Van der Ven, Greaves, Gvardiol and Milenkovic. So still needed that Arsenal defence, even though the fixtures aren't ideal really from a defensive standpoint for Arsenal. They've got Bournemouth away, which I think I think actually the, the fixture ratings have been updated because that Bournemouth fixture away was green, but now it's grey. So I think they have all been updated and stuff. But uh, yeah, Bournemouth away, Liverpool at home, and then obviously Newcastle away, Chelsea away. But then it also has Forest at home, and that's also grey. So I, I think it must be a bit of a glitch because Forest home is definitely a green fixture for Arsenal. Uh, or maybe not because our away form is actually really, really good. So maybe that's why it's a grey. I don't even know. But either way, still feel like we have to have a, Ga a Gabriel or some sort of Arsenal defender on a wild card draft because they are still the best defense in the league uh, and i think that they will start picking up some clean sheets i know the southampton and leicester fixtures weren't ideal from a defensive standpoint but at the end of the day you're gonna want an arsenal defender anyway uh gone van der ven as well i'm not completely convinced by spurs uh defense but they do have some really nice fixtures coming up van der ven can offer you that kind of attacking return as well he has picked up two assists this season already and uh poro is obviously the better option but he's like 0.9 more so i'd probably just want to go van der ven to kind of get into that spurs defense and, and he's always he's always going to play as well he's not like he's going to lose his spot so for 4.6 mil i don't think it's too bad for uh for van der ven at all uh greaves is just your normal four mil defender could be any four mil playing defender really um you're not going to be playing these players at all really unless a worst case scenario happens and a lot of your players get injured but you got to put that money into that player so yeah four mil. i think he actually might be 4.1 now um he is 4.1 so i can only just afford this draft i have nothing in the bank so if you can't afford greaves then yeah there are other four mil players that you could bring in instead i've just got greaves because he's he's probably the better he's probably the best one out of them all he's not again not a great option to have in your team but out of all the four mil defenders i'd probably say greaves is, is the best uh also gone Vardial as well he's now gone down to 5.9 which is quite nice because you just get that city defender for a little bit cheaper again if you want to get the cheapest way into that city defense then obviously you go edison in goal uh, but uh yeah Gvardiol for an outfield player 5.9 mil not too bad there are other options as well like uh ruben diaz if you really wanted to go to rico lewis is also an option if you wanted to go lewis that does save you a lot of money where you could obviously pump that money elsewhere i think that lewis is lewis is probably like just as likely to get benched as Gvardiol at this point so maybe if you wanted to take the risk and you did want to go lewis instead of Gvardiol, that would save you 1.2 mil and then you could use that money elsewhere really you could you could pump that 1.2 because that's that's quite a lot of money 1.2 it's, it's not a bad amount to uh to kind of have in the bank so if you wanted to go lewis um in, instead i mean you could always go trent instead of gabriel but then you obviously have no arsenal defense so that's obviously something you could do there but uh yeah lewis or Gvardiol either really works i think they're both likely to start fixtures and, and i think they're both likely to get benched at any point as well they have both been benched at some point i think in the season um obviously lewis missed the arsenal game also got benched in the brentford game as well i think Guardiola got benched in one of the fixtures as well um if i do remember correctly but i think he came on at half time with rico lewis potentially uh so he got yeah he got benched in that brentford game as well so he's had one less benching 
than Lewis. So I don't know why he got benched in that fixture, but he's played basically 90 minutes in every single fixture apart from that. So Gavardiol is marginally safer, but obviously he's going to cost you an extra 1.2 mil as well. If you have a decent defense, which I think you kind of do with the rest of these players, then maybe you do go Rico Lewis, but at the end of the day, that's obviously your choice. Maybe you can't afford Gavardiol anyway, and you have to go Rico Lewis, but either way, that's the defense. In midfield, we've got Saka, who's got Bournemouth away. Again, we don't really know the situation with Saka. If he is injured, then obviously you just go for like a Phil Foden or potentially a um, a, a Brennan Johnson or something like that if you, if you if need be uh, just simply because on a wild card draft you don't really want to go into it with an injured player so yeah if Saka's out Son Madison Brennan Johnson Foden all really good options uh, that you could obviously put into your team uh, maybe even um I was going to say I've lost my train of thought I was about to say a player then but I've completely lost my train of thought but either way you know what I mean like Saka I still think is a really really good option but if he is injured like the the news that has come out that Carsley said that it's not as bad as he thought and Obviously, he went back to Arsenal for treatment and stuff, but they didn't want to risk him. So, even though it looked like a hamstring injury, I don't actually think it is that. But we'll obviously have to wait and see if the press conference is this week. Uh, Rogers, obviously, just for a really good enabler. Um, again, I think Rogers is just one of the best players to own this season. You know, for 5.2 mil, whatever he is now, 5.2, 5.3, just such a good enabler. He's playing 90 minutes in the Champions League squad up front. Why wouldn't you want that in your team? Uh, also got McNeil as well, 5.7. I think for that price range, uh, for that price range at this point in the season where the fixtures got coming up i think he's definitely much better than semenyo and, and uh smith Rowe and stuff like that because the fixtures are just so good i think he's like third for expected assists this season now he's playing in that number 10 role he's just absolutely lighting up the 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 the, the, the pitch so really like him as an option in bumo is just a solid option for quite a while to be fair i mean his fixtures don't go bad until really game week 14 so even if you're bringing him now uh, with a Man United away fixture, which isn't even a bad fixture for Brentford. Uh, after that, you've got Ipswich, Bournemouth, Everton, Leicester all coming up. You like, I could understand getting rid of him around maybe 14, 15 because I've got Villa, Newcastle, Chelsea, Arsenal, City, Liverpool all coming up. So, I completely understand why you'd want to get rid of him, but it's not like an immediate sell. I think even in those fixtures, he can kind of score against anyone, and he's on penalties as well. Uh, and then Palmer's also in this uh, wild card draft as well. I, again, the only reason he's in here is because. You can't really get to a Salah from this point because you don't have the money. And as well as that, everybody's going to be jumping on him as well. Like, after, like, game week 12 onwards, Chelsea's fixtures are ridiculous. Like, Leicester, Southampton, and 12 and 14. And then after Spurs, they have Brentford, Everton, Fulham, Ipswich, Palace, Bournemouth, Wolves. He's a captaincy shout for all of those fixtures. He's 10.8 now. He's only going to go up more, in my opinion. And yet, obviously, the fixtures aren't ideal. He's got Liverpool and Arsenal, like, away in at home. And, and I mean, Newcastle and United are fine for Palmer. Uh, I mean, Liverpool and Arsenal could be fine as well. But I think that if he does get returns, he's just going to get higher and higher. And he's just going to be a player that you're going to want to want for that fixture run. He just can do so much damage to any any team. And I just think he's he's got to be a down by default at this point. And, and yeah, I think with, with not having the money to go to a Salah or someone like that, unless obviously you got, if you downgraded Saka to a Madison, then obviously you could go Salah if you wanted to. But for me, I'd rather have Saka, Palmer and Haaland instead of just Haaland and Salah, in my opinion. But either way, that's the midfield. And up top, we've got Raul, Haaland, and Solanke. So Haaland obviously picks himself. Solanke, I think, is probably the... Probably not, not the second best strike to have right now because obviously um, Watkins is still playing really, really well. But with the fixtures I've got coming up, with only being 7.6 mil as well, I think he's a really, really nice option to have, which is why I put him on in this wildcard draft. So he kind of picks himself. And I've also got Raul as well. Um, he's actually been picking up returns like every single week. Since he started... Um, in game week four, because before that, Muniz was just getting the starts. But then Raul started game week four, goal, uh, game week five, goal, game week six, goal, game week seven, assist. And that's City away as well. The fixtures that, that Fulham have got coming up are really, really good. Obviously, Villa at home isn't ideal, but then they've got Everton, Brentford, Palace, Wolves. Uh, they've got Southampton coming up, stuff like that. I think he's on penalties as well. So I think as, you, as your third kind of like eight attacker, I think Raul is like a really, really good option personally. I, I really like him. And, and if I was on a wildcard draft, I think I'd definitely be definitely be having him. Because, yeah, there is always that rotation risk with Muniz. But as of right now, Muniz didn't score until City um, away. Uh, and before that, you know, Raul's just literally been doing wonders every single time he started. So he's in form and, and I really like him as an option. Like, you wouldn't have to play him this week. Potentially, you could if you wanted to. Like, Villa at home or Fulham away. Uh, which one you want to play, Rodgers or Raul, obviously. Maybe Raul because he's on penalties. But... I really like him as an option. I think he's gonna he's definitely going under the radar a little bit. Like I'd probably say he's much better than like a Chris Wood and stuff like that. Um but uh, I also forgot to speak about Milenkovic as well. Don't even know why. But yeah, Milenkovic is just in there for that 4.5 mil option. Um 
you could go Einar if you wanted to, but I think with set pieces, they're always trying to find Milenkovic, who just like nods it down to, to an attacker. Obviously, it's worked once uh, so far this season, and as well as that, it would have worked, worked again, but Chris Wood was just offside. So, don't know why I completely forgot about Milenkovic, but yeah, he's he's a really good 4.5 mil option. Palace, Leicester, West Ham, like third best defense in the league. I feel like a Forest defender is definitely a must. So that's the first wild card draft. And then the second wild card draft that I put together is it's a little bit different. It's got like Trent and stuff. Um, again, it's, it's still for debate, which is the best wild card draft because you can't have everybody. Uh, but in goal, we've got Edison and Ward. So just a cheaper route into that City defense. And then obviously when Arsenal's fixtures get good around game week uh, 12, is when you then transfer Edison out for um, for for Raya because obviously Raya's fixtures game week 12 onwards. Uh, he's got Forest, West Ham, United, Fulham, Everton, Palace, Ipswich, Brentford, Bright. Like from a defensive standpoint, ridiculous. Uh, and that's when Edison has um, game week 12. He has Spurs, Liverpool. You know, it, it's just not really a player that you got to want. So it's an easy transfer. Obviously, you are locking in a transfer, but that's in like four game weeks, so it's not something you have to worry about now. Plus, when you wild card, you'd like to think you're not going to be using many transfers after that wild card, so you just save them anyway. So yeah, Edison's in goal. Obviously, Ward still got Gabriel. Uh, got eight Nori instead of Van de Ven, just because um, it's just a little bit different. I mean, you could go Van de Ven if you want. There's no obviously Spurs players in this draft, so if you want to go Van de Ven. Obviously, absolutely fine if you wanted to do that. I've just gone eight Nori because I think the fixtures for Wolves are also very, very good. It's just a little bit of a different player. Like I said, I just, just so I'm not using the exact same players for a single wildcard draft. But obviously, eight Nori, not a great start of the season with Wolves. But after the City fixture, uh, and probably the Brighton fixture as well, they've got Palace, Southampton, Fulham, Bournemouth, Everton, West Ham, Ipswich, Leicester. He's getting into that left wing position. He's 4.4 mil. I think he's going to definitely come good at some point in the season. Uh, obviously, got nine points against Liverpool, nine points against Brentford. Um, his minutes are obviously pretty good as well like he's basically playing nine at least 90 in every single fixture so i really like eight nori but you could go van der ven if you wanted to uh greaves obviously the same we bought in trent this time though i mean chelsea and arsenal obviously not ideal fixtures but after that brighton villa southampton like not not terrible at all so i, I i'm for me i think i'm just going to keep trent i don't think i'm going to get rid of him um because i'm just going to keep him through the bad fixtures and i know he's going to come good he's still the defender that's created the most chances um in in the league this season so i really like him uh so that's why uh, trent makes this draft and obviously milenkovic just spoken about him could be an iron if you wanted to but i just prefer milenkovic just from that damage that you can do on set pieces so that's the defense for this wild card draft um in midfield it's basically all the same as well i've just gone for Foden instead of palmer it's either or really like on either of the drafts you could go Foden or um not Foden or Palmer, Foden or Saka, should I say. You could go for either of them. They're both really good options. Obviously, Saka's a little bit more, but he's on penalties. Foden has the better fixtures. Um, it, it's really whichever way you, you kind of want to go. I probably prefer Saka for a little bit more money, but even though the fixtures aren't ideal, like Bournemouth away is not a terrible fixture. And then after that, like he can score against Liverpool. Newcastle's not terrible. And he can score against Chelsea. Like Chelsea are really good going forward, but they do leak in a lot of goals. So... I don't, I don't mind keeping Saka at all. I think he's fine to obviously keep. And yeah, Foden, obviously, if you want to go a little bit different, like that Southampton at home fixture is going to be incredible. That That's going to be the week where everybody captains Haaland anyway. So maybe it's not even worth bringing him in, but it's just a little bit of a different option. And then Rogers, McNeil and Bumo Palmer, I think all just kind of pick themselves. Again, you could go for a Madison or someone as, as well if you wanted to, or a Brennan Johnson. But uh, like you could go Johnson instead of McNeil. But I just think McNeil, like say, third best assist potential this season playing in that number 10 role fixtures are just ideal really really good option but yeah if you wanted to go brandon johnson instead of mcneil obviously that's fine because he's i think is he cheaper i'm actually sure i've not even looked to be fair uh johnson is i oh know he's actually 6.6 .6, so you can't even do that anyway never mind i thought it was like 5 5.5 5 when he started but even though he's 6.6 .6 mil so fair play is a little bit more expensive so he wouldn't actually be able to do that uh and then yeah up top uh we've got raul harland and then we've got calvert lewin this time as well just because of the everton fixtures and i think he's going to come good eventually obviously he's on penalties and stuff so he should be fine you do still have 0 0.6 mil in the bank in this uh draft so you wouldn't be able to go from Foden to uh, Saka. You'd have to downgrade like Calvert-Lewin to a 5.5 striker or something like that. But I, I think I probably prefer this first draft, really. But um, at the same time, I'm not a massive fan of Flecken and Gold. I'd much rather have like a Raya or someone. So maybe you downgrade Vardio and then you bring in... Um, uh, you bring in Ray or something to a, from a Vardio to a Rico Lewis. But either way, just a couple more wildcard drafts. Um, like I say, just to get some more content for you guys this week. Because it's just been a little bit of a boring international break, really. Obviously, can't wait for FPL to be back. Um, and we'll see what happens. But yeah, best of luck with Game Week 8. Obviously, we do a final team selection on Friday. Uh, there's not going to be any deadline stream this week, though. Unfortunately, I am not uh, available for it. So yeah, after that, Game Week 9, we'll, we'll do them again. But yeah, Game Week 8, unfortunately, no deadline stream. 
Uh, so I do apologize that about that in advance. So I'll do my final team selection on Friday and properly go through my team because obviously I won't be doing it on the deadline. But either way, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you're brand new. And until next time, peace.